Hello and welcome to Apple Autos. My name is Austin and today we are going to take a look at the most extreme Silverado that Chevrolet has ever built. Introducing the Chevrolet Silverado ZR2 Bison. You guys may have heard of the ZR2 before and the ZR2 nameplate. It was actually used on the previous generation of Silverado and it's been used on the Colorado for a little bit of time now. The ZR2 is the most extreme off-road version of the Chevrolet vehicles that they make. However, the Bison steps it up yet another notch with an $8,440 dollar option on top of the standard ZR2 package. That is a lot of money. So today we're going to go over a full tour of the Silverado ZR2 Bison. We're going to check out the exterior, the inside, and take it for a drive, and we're going to see what I think. Now before we get too far into the video, I need to say that this ZR2 Bison is currently available for sale here at our Apple Chevrolet Northfield store here in Northfield, Minnesota. We actually have two ZR2 Bisons that are available. We have one finished in this beautiful new gray color, which I am a massive fan of. And we also have one finished in just your standard black, which looks quite menacing as well. Now, if you guys are interested, be sure to check out the link down in the description below where I have both of our ZR2 Bisons listed for sale. And if you guys are interested in any other Chevy trucks or any other manufacturers, we have all of them here at Apple Autos. So be sure to check us out down in the description below. All right, starting up front of the ZR2 Bison, the first thing that you're going to notice uh, or the way to tell that this is a Bison, we have these cool running lights that are built into the grill that are quite menacing looking. And we also have Chevrolet's flow tie. This might be the largest flow tie that I've ever seen. I can pretty much stick my fist directly through the center of it. So that of course improves our airflow into the 6.2 liter V8. That is the heart, the standard motor of this Silverado. There is also available diesel option. Now, another thing that you're gonna get with the Bison that you're not gonna get with the standard ZR2 is this stamped steel bumper, both in the front and the back. It looks serious it is very menacing looking we have these built-in like tow hooks our our hooks in the front and we have the aev bison badge all over the place on it and it looks extremely menacing we also have the aev bison badge that sits right behind that front plate mount which it does not uh, appear to be removable so no matter what you're gonna have a front plate mount even if you're in a state that doesn't require a front plate just so you are aware but it looks very menacing and it also does improve the approach angle and then in back, it also approves the departure angle as well. And if we also look in back, we have the exhaust tips that kind of go, uh, they, they kind of hide behind the bumper and they kind of go up and, and then down again. Uh, that's once again to approve our departure angle. So kind of cool that we have the hidden exhaust tips. Now that we're talking about that, let's actually take a listen to this 6.2. This 6.2 V8 has 420 horsepower, 460 pound-feet of torque, and it's your standard Chevy small block V8, meaning that parts are gonna be very easy to find for it. If you decide to own it out of warranty, considering Chevy's had this motor out for, I don't even know how long now, with just minimal updates here and there, they're super, super easy to work on, super easy to find parts for, super reliable, and have tons of torque and power all throughout, and they sound amazing with an exhaust system on it. So I'm very glad that Chevy is continuing their small block V8 production throughout the remainder of the Silverado's history, or as long as they possibly can, is what they've come out and said. So it is great to see that we still have a V8 powering the heart of this big old bison. As I close the hood of this ZR2, one of the things that is not different between the ZR2 and the Bison is this massive hood that covers that 6.2, and it looks quite menacing. The gloss black finish over the middle haunches with the 6.2 badging on the side, and just the overall aggressiveness of this hood is a really cool look. And when you're sitting behind the wheel, it's a very cool look as well, because all you can see out of the front end of this thing is the two black haunches. However, it's kind of interesting to me on the back of those haunches, they didn't put any vents or anything like that. And uh, they even have this little vent right in the center of these haunches. 
non-functional. We don't have any heat extraction uh, on the top of this hood. Kind of curious why they did that. I'm not really sure why they didn't um, because I think that we could quite easily get some additional heat out of the under hood here uh, by just making some functional vents on that really large hood piece. Let's continue our way down to the side of the ZR2 Bison. Down the side of the ZR2 Bison, we also get these aggressive rock rails that look beefy and mean and also have some functionality to them as well when it comes to hitting stuff on the underside, which is pretty cool. And speaking of the underside, with the Bison, we also get some additional covers, including a fuel tank cover, we get a differential cover, and then of course we have a front skid plate. So all types of different skid plates and underbody protection that are featured here on the Bison. We also have these AEV Bison specific 18 inch wheels wrapped in some Goodyear Wrangler mud terrain tires, which look very aggressive. Absolutely love this wheel design. See no reason to ever go the aftermarket route with wheels because those things look absolutely phenomenal. Other than that, on the side of the ZR2 Bison, there isn't a whole lot going on uh, beyond that on the st standard Silverado. I do really like the uh, gloss black painted door handles. They really stick out, which also matches the mirror cap and the wheels and the other additional black accents. It looks really, really good. I'm a big fan of that. And we also have our bison specific tailgate badging right on the corner. Looks pretty good. As we move around back of the bison, you can now see that super aggressive steel stamped bumper with the integrated uh, parking sensors and it just looks mean as can be. And I love these, once again, these kind of tow hooks that are into the back here look super, super aggressive and all the black accents, the black Chevy badge is super, super cool looking, very menacing looking truck. I also like the sticker that they put in the multifunctional tailgate, which is also standard. We actually press this top button here it folds this top portion down and then we press the bottom button it will open up the tailgate oh, i gotta have this closed open up the tailgate then we press this button open that up and then we press this button and we have ourselves a step and we can also throw up our handle here and we have ourselves a very easy way to get into the tailgate of this big old bison which is really really cool and there's a lot of functionality with this design of tailgate on the back of here and it's also super cool we're going to a drive-in or movie watching with this really comfortable seat that you have on the back of this thing. So I do really like that. I think it's probably the best designed tailgate step in the game. It's very, very slick. I'm a big fan of it and it's super easy to use. We also have bed liner standard in the back of this ZR2 with the ZR2 engraved or implanted in the front end of the bed, which does look quite cool. And we of course have the rear sliding window with a rear view mirror camera above that as well as our backup camera. Just kidding. We actually have our backup camera on the back of the tailgate. We have a specific bed camera. Now, just wait till we get into the interior so you can see just how many cameras this Bison has. And something that's really cool about the Bison um, that I haven't experienced on many other vehicles is you can use these cameras at any speed. They're available to use all of the exterior cameras on this thing, which is kind of unique. Another thing that is cool why we are back here on the back of the Bison is the taillights. We do have LED taillights for running lights. I also forgot to mention we do have some really cool headlights up front on the Bison as well. They are very similar to what you get on the standard Silverado, but just the overall updated headlight housings with these cool turn signals and headlights, they're, they got a really cool look to them. I'm a big fan of the way that the running lights look and the LED turn signals look and the way that it integrates into the front end. It's a really good looking set of lights. Let's hop in the interior and see what it's all about. Let's hop onto the inside of the Silverado ZR2 Bison. So I'm going to start off with the back seats here. Now, just a heads up, if you have uh, a shorter wife, a shorter spouse, a shorter mother, grandmother, that's constantly getting in and out of your vehicle, the Bison isn't easy to get in and out of. It's big, it doesn't have a running board uh, because it has these big side step or the big rock rails. Um, it's not easy to get in and out of. It is a heck of a step to get up in there. So just be aware of that uh, if that's something that you're interested in or something that you are consistently doing on a day-to-day -day basis with your Bison. Now hopping in here, like I said, it's a heck of a step to get in, but once you are in very comfortable spot to be on the two outer seats, we do have heated seats here, USB type C and a USB to keep our passengers charged up in the back seat. Um, and many other ZR2 models, including this one, we have this yellow stitching throughout the entire interior, which does include its way throughout the back. Seats back here are a little bit firm, but very comfortable. Tons of leg room. Uh, being five foot 11, I have at least six to eight inches of headroom above my head, like plenty. Never gonna have an issue hitting my head back here. Uh, if I fold down the center here, we got ourselves two cup holders, a little bit of storage, 
Uh, but overall, pretty basic back here. Not a whole lot going on. Not very exciting. We do have this fun material on the doors, which does carry its way to up front as well. We also have this cool, like, gloss chrome or black chrome finish around our vents and around our speaker grills back here, which is kind of cool looking. We also have the, some of that on our door panels. I think that pretty much wraps up the back seat. You guys don't spend a lot of time back here anyway. Let's move up front. But right before we do, I should also mention all weather floor mats are included. I did also want to mention one more thing before we go up front, and that is rear storage. We do, of course, just have the whole floor here, and then we can simply just pull up on the seat. We can do it individually on the other passenger seat as well, but then we have some under seat storage here, plenty of room to put stuff, or even uh, some small subwoofers if you guys end up wanting to do those in addition. Uh, but yeah, tons of storage, and it's super easy to put up and down. You just pull to go up and pull a little bit harder to go down. We also have some in-seat hidden storage, so we just pull open the back cushion of the seat, which is super easy to do as you can see and we actually have a pretty decent amount of storage back here personally if this were my vehicle i'd throw some ratchet straps back here and stuff i don't use super often but is necessary to have moving our way up front into the zr2 now the, the silverado did get its updated interior a few years ago it was an absolute game changer chevy needed it really bad and they nailed it when they finally did it is powered by google in here i'm sure there's plenty of other videos you guys have watched and seen about this whole infotainment system but it is the same system that is in all of those vehicles it's phenomenal it is really really good we have a digital dash we have a large digital main screen here and it is all powered by google it works flawlessly it works very well wireless android auto wireless apple carplay nice wireless um, charger as well sitting right here right in the middle uh which is out of the way pretty slick pretty easy to use we have these super tiny little paddle shifters on here nice that we have the availability to choose our gear here in the zr2 but with being the price point that it's at and it's supposed to be a fun truck it'd be kind of fun to get like what we get in like the raptor or the trx with the larger paddle shifters on the back of the steering wheel we do have four wheel drive auto in here uh, as well as a couple of selectable drive modes but nothing too crazy heated and cooled front seats and a really nice looking dash with a very functional heads-up display that shows a lot of our off-road settings and it is quite customizable as well now the overall interior of the zr2 i rate quite highly it's a very comfortable spot to be i could easily be in here for a long period of time very rugged interior that's going to stand up to pretty much anything you throw at it mud or whatever and be pretty easy to clean um so all in that, all of that together, it, it's a pretty awesome truck being in here, uh, moving around the inside, do have dual zone climate control. The one thing I don't like um, that Chevy does in a lot of their products is the fact that, well, I really like the fact that we get uh, touch buttons for all of our climate control, heated seats and stuff like that. We don't have to deal with all of that inside of the display, but it's annoying that all of the touch buttons that we have on the interior are covered up in gloss black. I can assure you in a no time, they're gonna be covered in fingerprint scratches, dust and whatever that'll all show up quite easily. So that'll be a little bit annoying. Locking front and rear diff uh, piano buttons above that with of course all of our safety systems as well. Uh, we can fold down the tailgate from in here. Uh, as you can see, I also have the rear view mirror camera on, which I personally am a big fan of. Some people don't like it. I love it. I think it's really, really cool. Chevy's been doing it for a little while now. I think they originally introduced it on the C8. Uh, correct me down in the comments below if I am wrong on that. But all in all, interior, exterior, the ZR2 Bison, it's a heck of a truck. It is a serious, silver, serious Silverado. Now, let's go take this thing on the road and see how it drives. All right, before we set off in the ZR2, I wanted to show you guys the heads-up display. I know that it's gonna flicker a bit because of the type of uh, LED, of course, that it emits. However, you can see here all of our cool off-road uh, indicators that you can see up on the windshield. Very, very helpful, very easy to see, of course, with our Speedo on there as well. Also here on the interior, I wanted to show off those piano buttons that we get. Just wait for it to focus one second here. And as you can see, our locking diffs and all of our piano dials right up top which is kind of slick on the interior of this and then for our shifter in here by simply just tapping the brake we tap here and pull back to put it into drive tap here push forward for reverse tap just kind of pull it in the middle a little bit for neutral and then press for park so we don't have our standard uh, pull down shifter up here or turn dial but we have this little funny knob thing that has a little leather wrap on it so Kind of slick, kind of nice. I like it. Another thing I wanted to show off in the ZR2 is its cameras. The amount of adjustability customizations that you have for visibly seen and your cameras here in the Silverado are ridiculous. Anything you possibly want to see un other than a legit underbody camera, this thing has, and you can use them at any speed, which really surprises me that they allow that. 
Let's go ahead and put it in drive and set off in the ZR2. ZR2 is quite a big truck to be behind the wheel of, and the only thing that you can see out of the hood is the two large haunches. However, it is quite easy to drive with the large amount of cameras that it has. It makes it pretty easy to park, and of course, blind spot monitoring and all of those fancy things make it a very livable and easy truck to drive. For day-to-day -day driving, you can expect to average around 15 miles per gallon with the ZR2. The ZR2 6.2 liter V8 is paired to a 10-speed automatic transmission. We're gonna go ahead and floor it here in just a second. That way you guys can see it's downshifts and the overall torque and acceleration takeover and the power that the ZR2 has. Personally, I really like driving it around. I think it's a lot of fun. I think it gets a lot of attention because it looks very aggressive, a very beefy looking truck. It also has tons of torque and tons of get up and go, which make it an enjoyable truck just for overall power. All right, let's see what the ZR2 has for get up and go. As you can see, that 10 speed downshifts really, really quickly, and it has a very responsive throttle with all of that download torque that this LT motor offers. I'm a really big fan of the powertrain of the ZR2, very fun, and it also can tow a pretty decent amount. I believe, I'll put it up on the screen here, but I believe it's just under 9,000 pounds. Overall, to sum up my review on the Silverado ZR2 Bison, this truck is amazing. Everything about this thing is really cool. The exterior design is fantastic. The interior design is very nice with still having the availability to be cleanable and be rugged. Um, and all in all, this is a really cool truck. I'm really excited to see people take this overlanding on all the overland projects. I think this is a great, great vehicle for that. And uh, I think this is, with the powertrain that's in here, these are gonna last a really long time. Super reliable, long-term truck. I do highly recommend the ZR2 Bison. Now, you guys are going to have to let me know down in the comments below what you guys think of the ZR2 Bison. I'm very curious what you guys have to say. Is this you worth the price range of a Ford Raptor or Ram TRX without the engine performance of those vehicles? You guys are going to have to let me know down in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for tuning in here to Apple Autos. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We have lots of videos coming soon, and we look forward to seeing you soon.